So, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me live. Just got nine o'clock here in the UK. Uh, hello to David on Facebook, Bobby on Facebook, John on Facebook, Lee on Facebook. Uh, shouted out to Carly, Corey, everyone else who joined us on Twitter and on Periscope as well. Um, welcome. If you've not joined us before, my name is Ross. Uh, I run Acts on This, TV Actors Network, the best website in the UK, on the planet actually, for uh, for actors. Basically, um, get yourself over to actsonthis.tv. You will find there hundreds of hours worth of interviews with the biggest casting directors, actors, agents, writers, producers, voiceover agents. Now, I added a voiceover agent podcast today uh, to the website, actsonthis.tv. Get a membership. It'll cost you £7.50 a month if you pay up front for a year. It's bloody inexpensive and massive. Massively, massively valuable. Um, seriously, I mean, every big casting writer in the UK, TV-wise, is on that website. So go check it out. Do a live broadcast every Monday night. Tonight is um, we alternate the topics every sort of every week. Basically, we do a book club sometimes. Sometimes we do something called motivation and mind hacks. Tonight is an open mic live Q and A where basically. Anything goes. If you want to ask anything tonight about the acting industry, voiceover industry, I've been a voiceover artist for 15 years, definitely know what I'm talking about with voiceover. Um, online brand building, online like business building, social media networking, uh, like marketing, anything. Um, tonight's the night to, to ask it, basically. We're going to sit here for about another 55 minutes, have a nice chat. Hopefully people will go away nice and inspired and motivated to take some action in their life and careers this week. And you're going to have a little, you know, better week than you would have had had you not been here so um appreciate everyone for being here thanks to everyone who's retweeted it thanks to everyone who shared it on facebook um i've got a whole list of things that i want to talk about tonight but this is a q a for you lot so i'll start off with do you know what let's start off with someone's already mentioned voiceover let's start off with a little bit um about voiceover so like i said i've been all right and i've been a voiceover artist for 15 years now Crazy when I think back to when I first started. In that time, um, I've gone from you know kind of just being a an artist who would you know do a job every couple of months to today working pretty. I wouldn't say daily because you know every couple of days I would say um, I will be recording a TV advert, a radio advert, some kind of cartoon, kids animation, um, some kind of web promo, corporate video, how to video, uh, public announcement, anything. The, the jobs are so wide and varied. Uh, I've just finished all 78 episodes. Good evening, Lucy, of a brand new CBeebies animation for kids that's going to be the ne- I swear to God, it's going to be the next big thing. If you've got someone in your family who's zero to six years old, 2019, watch out because you are going to be seeing Timpo. That's the name of the show. Absolutely everywhere. I play Timpo. It's quite exciting. I might even have a toy out of myself. Uh, not obviously of me, of the little blue fellow that I play um, next year, which is very exciting. So I was getting loads and loads of questions asked about voiceover. I have had questions asked to me about voiceover for years. I used to run a voiceover coaching company, um, which I closed down because I it was taking up too much of my time. Um, it was kind of like an ironic moment, really. It was like it was too... <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> Not blowing me on trumpet, but we're too successful. Couldn't um, couldn't cope. Literally, me and and the CEO of the voiceover gallery, which is my agent, we ran it together. Um, we couldn't cope. She was fostering kids at the time that she went on to adopt. I was breaking through in all kinds of areas of my online business and acting career. We just couldn't do it. Um, so we ran it for about a year. Um, coached a lot of people through that. It was super successful, but we closed it down. Since then, I've not done any coaching on the voiceover industry. So this week, well, last week actually. I decided I was going to go to the voiceover gallery, my agents, and I was going to sit down with head of talent management and talent acquisition. Basically, the woman, Hannah Ralph, her name is, the woman who is in charge of taking on voiceover talent. She will scout voiceover talent on a daily basis. She will be the one who's listening to your voice reels if you ever send a voice reel to the voiceover gallery. Voiceover gallery is one of the biggest voiceover agents in the UK. They've got studios in Manchester and London as well. They cover the whole country. Um, Lots of successful voiceover artists on their books. um, And I'm incredibly lucky that that I'm one of their clients. Um, They changed my life. Honestly, I cannot... And I tell them this all the time because I cannot overestimate the difference... Um, that voiceover has made to my life and my career. James Wood, good evening. All right, mate. Um, so what I did, yeah, last week I went to see Hannah and I sat down with her and we filmed this on my vlog, right? So I do a weekly vlog called Watch Ross. Go to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross and that's, that's behind the scenes of my acting career, voiceover career, online business and life. Um, and we sat down and we had Hannah on the vlog, but I also recorded an exclusive one hour podcast with Hannah for all premium members of actsonthis.tv. So like I said at the start, if you're an actor and you don't have a premium membership to actsonthis.tv, you seriously need to get one. Like, I'm not just saying that and I'm not pushing and sale. I mean, it's so cheap anyway. I'm not a salesman, but 
I'm just like, look, guys, it's at the most a tenner a month if you pay it monthly, £7.50 a month if you pay it yearly. Um, you're going to get access to two the two brand new features a month now. This is the way I'm going to work it from now on. You're going to get two podcasts um, or two uh, live broadcasts, um, like Q&As with a casting director or an agent or something, um, or two video interviews every single month without fail. Okay, You're going to have more content like going up on a monthly basis than there's ever been before. Um, and this podcast with Hannah, I sit down and I talk, Literally, we talk through the entire process of what an actor needs to do to get established in voiceover. Literally, cannot be more explicit, step by step, right? Because I was like, I'm I'm not sick of it, but like, I have to re- generally write out the same email to every actor who, who emails me. I should have probably just like copied and pasted one and had one in, in my notes at the moment, but I don't. I write the same email back to people time and time again. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to put it down in an audio format where people can listen to it wherever they're doing get their notes out, take notes, and actually have an actionable plan of what they're going to do in order to begin looking at getting into voiceover. Because I promise you, it's not something... People rush into it and people think, oh, I can just do it. Honestly, you can't. I swear to God, you can't. I don't care how good an actor you are. Voiceover is such a different discipline. It really is. I've taken like I've taken award-winning actors into the voiceover studio. And honest to God, and they'd hold their hands up and say they're complete dog shit at it. They've been absolutely terrible. Because it isn't just reading some words on a page. There's so much more goes into voiceover technique in terms of posture, breathing, pace, pitch, tone, uh, musicality, melody, the audience you're reading to. Um, There's a lot to think about. It's not just tip up and read some stuff. You've got to be excellent at sight reading because you very often get scripts on arrival. And you might be doing an advert for a multinational brand. They're paying you a lot of money for this as well, thousands of pounds. And you'll get a script 10 seconds before you walk into the booth. There might be 12 other people on the other side of the glass all looking at you to do a great job. You've got to work well under pressure. You know, you can't just, you know, there's not a lot of room for error when there's that much money involved, that many people involved. um, And the, the industry works in quite short notice. So you've always, you know, sometimes you don't get, I mean, you just don't get practice. You have to turn up and do your job. So it's not for everybody, but um, if you want to start getting into it and actually, you know, understanding how it works, listen to this podcast. Let me play you just 60 seconds of the vlog from this week. This, you'll hear a little bit of the of the podcast in this, but if you want to listen to the whole one hour podcast with Hannah, go to atsonthis.tv. It's in the members area right now. You'll need a premium membership to access it though, but here's a little clip for you. I'd be hiding in the uh, in the stock room, my minimum wage job that I hated. And you'd be like, Ross, I've got your job. And I'd be like, oh my God, like this is now the equivalent of like almost a month's wages or something stupid like that. Definitely. <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 43 of Watch Ross, the one where it's all about the climb. Right now though, I'm going to learn about voiceover. Are you coming in to listen or what? I'm coming in to not just listen. He's going not to listen. He's going to take over. As uh, the agents are essentially selling voiceovers, that, that's what they do. They present these voiceovers to clients who ultimately would pick them yep. uh, and then put them in for jobs. So I need to make sure there's the best talent available for our agents to put forwards. So every day I, I talent scout. You'd be amazed how bad people go about approaching agents. Boom, there you go. Very, very quick clip, just 60 seconds of it. So you hear uh, Hannah there saying every day she talent scouts, but you would not believe like the mistakes actors make when approaching a voiceover agent. Some of the things in that podcast that she tells me are just insane. They're ridiculous. Uh, we talk you through how you create a voice reel, exactly what Hannah would want from your voice reel and everything she doesn't want from your voice reel. That's probably more important. Actors fall into that trap all the time. They just end up doing it very wrong. Um, go listen to it. It's really, like, really, really interesting. And once you have done, if there's any other questions, go and listen to that first. But if there's any other questions after that, obviously email me. Um, but ideally, I did that podcast so that I could send people who asked me the basic questions and the start-off questions, I can just send us that podcast now um, so I don't have to spend 15 minutes writing the same email out every time I write it out. Um, so that's the first thing that I want to talk about. Yeah, 
Um, so the vlog's back, obviously, as well. Vlog started today. What I'm doing is I'm vlogging every other week now. So you'll get an episode of Watch Ross every other Monday. And in the weeks between, um, you're going to get a special video that I'm going to talk to you about later on in this in this uh, broadcast because I want suggestions for that special video. So first question up, I can see... Um, Lee Martin says, Ross, I'm getting my showreel done tomorrow, finally, and I wanted to get my first line on TV. I've got a list of casting directors and directors I'm going to contact, but I wonder if you could advise certain people uh, to contact when looking for your first TV appearance. So, so Lee, yeah, definitely, mate, 100%. Um, the, the, um, it's, I don't want to say lowest hanging fruit. It kind of sounds like it's not as good, but it is. Um, the easiest accessible roles on TV, Lee, are going to be your one and two liners, on the serial dramas, Coronation Street, EastEnders, Hollyoaks, and Emmerdale. They're constantly in need of paramedics, doctors, nurses, policemen. Man, like, God, the amount of policemen I played in my career is insane so far. Still get asked in for policemen all the time. I'm filming another role as a policeman in a Sky Comedy on October the 3rd. I just filmed the policeman in Casualty uh, that was played out the week before last, um, BBC One. Get that on iPlayer if you want to go and check it out. Episode 5 of the latest series of Casualty. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're constantly looking for these people who come in and out of stories who, you know, aren't the regular characters um, or they're not, you know, going to be around a long time. I would absolutely get in touch with um, Peter Hunt. So nice. Peter Hunt's out of uh, his office until the 1st of October at the moment. So uh, he's the head casting director for Hollyoaks. Um, I would get in touch with Joanne Moss at Coronation Street. Uh, I get in touch with um, Jenny Radcliffe as well um, at Coronation Street. You could also get in touch with Faye Styring at Emmerdale. Um, and I'm not sure about EastEnders, if it's still Julia Crampsey or whether some of the other in-house team at the BBC. It's cast in-house uh, EastEnders, so um, it's worth dropping any of the in-house team uh, an email at BBC. Uh, people like John Cannon, uh, Roland Beckley. Uh, people like that and just just ask about who's casting, you know, uh, EastEnders. It was always Julia Crampsey. I'm presuming it's still her, but it's a it's a soap I've never been in. It's not, you know, not Cockney enough in it, yeah. Uh, so uh, I've not done that one yet, Lee. But yeah, that would that would be my advice, and I would write to them very briefly, explicitly asking for one of those roles. Don't don't like complicate it by writing and saying, you know, would love to be considered for any roles coming up. Like explicitly say, listen. You know, I'm after my first TV credit. I said I've been saying this for months, and it just works. So many people have like got back in touch and went, "Yeah, thanks, thanks," because it's just works. I've just got this first line or whatever. Um, you just want to get one line, mate. You want to be the policeman in Emmerdale who who shouts in the background, "Boss, I think you should check this out." That's it. That's your job. So low pressure. First credit, dead easy. Get used to being on set. Um, you'll get treated very, very nicely. It's amazing the difference between the step up between being a background artist and having one line. Like, seriously, in a drama, the difference between being a background artist and one line is insane. You get your one line in a drama or a comedy. I've got very few lines in this in this uh, Sky drama uh, that I'm doing in October. You still get a car to come and pick you up from your house, exclusive transport to and from set, your own trailer, food. Um it's insane, and it's you know you're not doing that much more than the people who you know are spending bless them like twelve hours there, walking to and you know to and from places in the background and stuff. Um, but you'll have a great time. You have your one line, still zero pressure, but you're learning a lot and you'll meet some great people. So um, so that would be my advi advice, uh, Lee, definitely. Um, and start the reel that you're doing. Start the reel with a piece that is the closest to you playing yourself. You know, and it can be very unextraordinary the piece you open your showreel with because a lot of TV is unextraordinary. Um, it's you know everyday life. A lot of the soaps are you know people working in a factory, going into the the cafe, ordering some sandwiches, leaving, having a bit of a moan. Your showreel, you know, can include scenes like that. It doesn't have to be cars blowing up in the background and you murdering people because that's very very rare. You'll ever be asked. <laughs> To play a part like that, so make sure your show reel, you know, is uh, is going to be useful for you getting your first TV credit as well. Um, Bobby says, "I never sent the email. I just read the article you had on the site. What's that, Bobby? I've missed another comment. What are you referring to? Um, uh, had a VO class. Uh, explain that a bit more, Bobby. I don't get it, mate. I've, I've probably missed a uh, a comment or something on Facebook. It's not showing me uh, all the comments. Um, but that's cool. Um, other things on my list." Do you know what, as well, 
let me. I've not announced this yet. It's not really anything like dead super to announce. But you're the first guys to know about this. If you want to know, uh, Lee, who you and this goes for everyone. If you want to know who I think personally, right now, and apologies if I've missed anybody out who happens to stumble across this broadcast and like, why didn't you include me in the list? I handpicked 33 casting directors in TV, casting associates, and casting um, assistants who are on Twitter. Um, and and there were more, way more than that on Twitter, but I chose these 33 people particularly because they're active on Twitter. They're casting very good stuff, and they're not just on Twitter and they and they tweet every six weeks. They're on Twitter and they're very active in the community and they're replying to actors um, a lot. And like I say, I might have missed some, but these are the ones that I was like, actually, right now, these are the 33, came to 33, three's my lucky number, um, that I think you should be uh, you should be following. And I promise you, there's at least a handful of those that you will never have heard of because they are casting assistants and associates. A lot of actors only know the casting directors. So the assistants and associates are the right-hand men and women of the casting director. Some of them, you know, are on equal pegging with, the, you know, the casting associates. They're... Um, you know, that you'll get two people working together. Um, you know, the casting assistants will be newer to the industry, um, but still will be the casting directors of tomorrow. If you just text the word, test this out for me now, actually, if you want to do it, it's not going to cost you any more than a standard message on your phone. So if you've got text messages included in your phone, but it won't cost you anything. If you just text the word casting to 82228, so 8228, casting, text the word casting to 8228, um, you'll get an automated, autom- like, mated message back, just asking for your email and your first name, and then you're going to get access. I'm going to send you a link to this secret page on the new act on this.tv where it's actually got all these 33 people listed. It's got it's got links to their IMDb pages and their casting directors guild pages with their contact information on. And it's got a button underneath each of the photographs, which you just click and it will give you like instantly you will follow them on Twitter if you're logged into your Twitter account. So you just need to text the word casting to 8228. You'll get on that. Uh, and then you'll also be on my SMS list where I send like offers out and I send like, you know, invites to like events that I'm doing. And I want to do some more. Um, I want to do some panel events, you know. I was I, I went and spoke at a panel event for Spotlight the other night on Wednesday night. Um, I chaired a panel um, of casting directors talking about um, actors and casting with, you know, casting actors with disability and, di- you know, just basically around diversity and inclusion. It was fascinating. I had a great turnout there, some great casting directors, both on the panel and in the audience. Um, and I thought, you know what, I want to do some of these panels for acts on this because um, they're just really intimate, honest chats about the industry. And there was like, there was a writer, a well known writer there, a very well known casting director there. Um, and a very well-known agent there, and I was just chairing. I was kind of just the the host, I guess. Um, I would love to do those. I'm going to be sending invites out, you know, specifically uh, to people on the SMS list and people, the premium members of that's on this. They'll get an invite first. So um, text casting to eight triple two eight. Get on that list. Um, Jenna says when. Don't know when yet, Jenna. I've got quite a few things coming up. I'm going to be launching Bulletproof Actor again. Um, in end of October, that's a mindset coaching program that I run just once, twice a year maximum. Um, very excited about that. I've been getting a load of emails about that. I was going to wait until the end of the year. I reckon I can get one in end of October, get a um, you know uh, an enrollment in for that. That'll be the only one you know this year, and probably for about six months after that, there won't be another one until the middle of 2019. Go to bulletproofactor.com. Ultimately, if you want to get your head right for this industry, if you feel you are holding yourself back you self-sabotaging yourself, your head is screwed up, you've lost your confidence, you're not motivated, you, um, you're you struggling, basically. If you're struggling psych- psychologically with this industry, with your mental health around this industry, around acting, around feeling empowered, getting up, going out there and getting work, and you're struggling with that, bulletproofactor.com, get on the waiting list for a program. It's called Unstoppable Confidence Infinite Success. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor, I'm certainly not anything to do with, you know, kind of like you know, uh, uh, you know, being a, a qualified counselor type person. I um, have just got over 10 years worth of experience in positive psychology and a shitload of experience coaching actors. Um, so if you have a look on bullyprofactor.com, you'll see videos of people talking about the program. Um, it's changed a lot of people's lives. Honest to God, swear to God, it's, it's powerful. Um, it's all stuff that I used in my own life before I started coaching other people on it. Um, and I thank all of that material into you know producing what i you know what what i am today getting better every day as well you know it's all about improvement um 
Let's have a look. Lee says it works. Lee's done the text thing. He says he's on it now. So texting casting to 8228 does work. Excellent. I've texted the number. Ross says, John, excellent. John, you should get a couple of messages back, mate. Just asking for your details. And then it'll send you a, uh, a link directly uh, for you to click on your phone. You can go and start following those people now. So there you go. That's that question answered. Right. Any more for any more? I've got a few other things on my list. But before I start talking about those... Let's talk about what you want to talk about. Anything to do with the acting industry, voiceover. Do you know what? It's just anything. It doesn't matter. I'm not bothered what it's to do with. <laughs> just want to talk about anything at all. And those listening on the audio experience who are listening on the recording of this on the podcast, because um, you, can, you can get the podcast audio of this um, on iTunes. Just search for Acts on This TV, all one word. If you're listening just on the podcast, um, come and join us one Monday night live. Like if you're if you're a listener and you've never joined in, and I don't know your name, don't know you even listen, um, please come and come and say hello. I got a, an email off somebody today, um, and they said it's brilliant. They uh, let me read you this email. I was like, yes, this is like this is really cool because this is the stuff that I don't know about. Don't know about this at all, and I love getting emails from people who listen to the uh, to the podcast. But I've no idea they uh, they listen to the podcast. Oh, it's on Instagram. It's not on an email. Let me very quickly pull pull this up on uh, on Instagram. How are people getting on with Instagram? We used to do a load of live broadcasts on Instagram and stuff like that um, around Instagram and how you use it as an actor to promote yourself. How how are people doing on that? If you need any help with that, let us know. Yeah, this this message just said, "Hi Ross, hope you well. Just thought you might um, like to fire." Just thought you might find the power of your podcast cool. I was at an event this weekend with the voiceover network and met loads of great new people, but really connected quickly with two other women. We ended up at this bar chatting all night, talking about mindset and taking action and realized a few hours in that all of us had been introduced to this stuff by you in your podcast. And one of them has talked me into doing Bulletproof Actor next time. So somebody must have done Bulletproof Actor there as well. Um, how cool is that? So there's three women probably never been on a live like with us before but are listening to the recording on um on itunes so you know super cool if that's one of you you know get yourself onto a live broadcast soon myra said it works she's obviously got the uh got the 33 casting directors and richard Haler is in the house from the uk rich just noticed you sent me i've not read them yet you've sent me a couple of messages just saw him in my emails on twitter richard's from miami he's now in the uk um we should definitely get a brew whilst you're here, mate. Totally manic week again. No idea what I'm doing from one day to the next, but I'm sure I can find an hour um, to meet you somewhere, Media City or somewhere even you know closer uh, to to. You should come at Lily's. You watched it on the vlog. You should come. That's the coffee shop I always go in. You should come at there, mate. And we should get a brew. Okay, it's to Wormston. Um, so yeah, um, if you're listening on the on the podcast and you don't normally join us live, come and join us live at some point. Um, so he says, love to. Rich, sort it out, mate. Um, don't know if you've got my number, haven't you? Because you came, I've, I've met you with you once before. So just text me and let us know what you're, uh, what you're doing, and we'll, we'll make it happen. Right. What else do people want to talk about? This is about. This is not about me. This is about you. What else is going on in your life? What are you struggling with? What do you need some help with? Um, or I'll go on to another one of these little, little topics of discussion that I've got down here. There's a couple of things. It's quite interesting. Whilst people are putting their questions together, what does everyone think of this yes or no campaign that's going on on Twitter? Yes or no, hashtag yes or no. Basically, it's taking that industry by storm a little bit, and I've got mixed opinions on it. So what it means basically is that casting directors tell actors for sure yes or no. Whereas, as you know, for many, many years and since time began, it's basically been if you don't hear from us, you ain't got it. If you've got the part, then you know we're going to get in touch with you, but you know apart from that you don't you don't find out um and i'm a little bit torn between going you know what is this again just giving people something to complain about is this just actors again procrastinating on something when they could be out actually focusing on the next opportunity you see when i come out of an audition the thing for me is like i've done it it's finished i had to train myself to do this it wasn't naturally like this but i train myself to do it and i'm like i'm done that that audition's done I can't possibly change what's just happened. I did my best, gave it my all. It's in the lap of the gods. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I'm going to focus on getting my next opportunity now. And it is quite hard. I think the initial audition is dead easy to do that. You know, when you just had one go at it, I think it gets harder after a recall. So for me, I'm not bothered about hearing yes or no for the initial audition because I just know if I don't hear anything, I ain't got it. 
I have, I don't know, I have got, I think there's, I think there's a good reason to say yes or no to a recall because that's, you know, because there are parts where I've definitely fixated on because they've been big, big roles I've gone for. And I've gone, right, I've had a recall, I've smashed that. Am I going to get it? And sometimes I've, I've lost, you know, quite a, you know, a few hours just deliberating on it and thinking and checking things and checking Twitter and stuff and thinking, oh, is anyone else who was there who got a recall? Have they posted that they've got it? Um, et cetera. So that I think I think for me, yes or no only needs to come in after a recall. And I don't know if that's what everyone's putting forward for it. I don't know if they're just putting forward yes or no for every audition, um, even if it's just the first round. But I think first round, not bothered. Second round, yeah, let people uh, people know. But it's been some high-profile casting directors who have signed up to say, yeah, I'm in support of it. Dan Hubbard tweeted me, uh, direct message me on Twitter the other day to say um, that he'd quite like to do a live broadcast again with me. Um, and talking about it, you know, talking about that that issue, he's he's committed to, to going yes or no. I don't know for round one or round two or how it works, but um, what are your thoughts? Would you need to know? Do you think it's better for you if you, if you find out, you know, Yes or no, even if it's just for round one. Are you bothered about that? Would you want it for a recall? Or maybe you're not bothered even about the recalls. You're just like, you know what? I'm just, it's always been like this. I knew what I was signing up for. Uh, when I got into that industry, I'm just going to roll with it because maybe you've just learned, <laughs> learned to deal with it. Um, I don't know. Um, let's have a look. Rich says, when it's over, it's over. Let it go. Next. And then and he says, Richard is absolutely correct. Next is the most useful word available to actors. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Rich says, uh, uh, Lee says, yeah, I agree. Because I actually think the weight is worse than the rejection. Yeah, I think so. On on When it's a big role and you've got a recall, like I say, that's, what, that's when I, I, I agree with that. Um, but you do have to train yourself to work through the weight. Um, that should be a program I put together <laughs> working through the weight. <laughs> um, but yeah, because it, because otherwise, yeah, you become so unproductive. I think sometimes if you just focus on getting, you know, getting as busy as you can, so you almost forget that that call could come, um, then it's a lot, you know, it's a lot easier by doing stuff. You you know, you you're not able to to dwell on on anything. Um, John says, "Dude, I texted the number." So did you text casting, John, the word casting to 82228? You text the word casting to to that number, you should get the messages back. A few other people who are on here tonight have done it and said that it's, that it's worked. So unless your mobile phone provider is blocking incoming texts or something, I don't know, but it should be working. Let us, uh, let us know. Sam says, hey, Ross, I hope you're well. Oh, so this is another question. Okay, cool. Um how do you deal with the lead up to auditions? For example, I had one for Corey and got it, felt fine. Since then, I felt more nervous for the lead up. No idea why. Any suggestions? I do, yeah, this is this is really interesting, man. And congrats on getting the getting the initial the initial role on Corey. Um, for me, this is a big part of what I coach people on a bulletproof factor, and it's all about realizing that. The re the reason that you're you're you know you're feeling nervous on the lead up is because you are fearing a loss of something, even if it's subconscious and you don't realise you're doing this right. The only reason you're feeling nervous is because you feel maybe it's because you've had a role now and you may be putting a bit of pressure on yourself to go right. You've you know you've got to prove yourself now. You've done it once. You can do it again. Um, you're fearing loss of a few things, number of things. You know, a loss of like. Well, everything from kind of confidence, if you get knocked back, pride, if you have to tell people you went for it and you didn't get it, maybe it's, you know, even on a, on a level of going, well, I'm traveling to London on the train and, I'm, you know, if I don't get this part, I've just spent £90 on my train ticket, so lost financially. Fears of lots of things. Um, and also, you know, a fear of like, you know, a lack of control in an environment like that because you're going in on other people's terms. And what we do in, in Bulletproof Factor is, is we realize, actually, you know what? And Susan Jeffers says this in a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. She says, if you realize, like, and I mean really understand that at every point in your life where you felt nervous or you've had to go through something that you were worried about or scared about, chances are you handled it, Sam, and you just did it. And every audition you've done, no matter how nervous you've been, you've done it, you handled it. And you probably came afterwards and went, why the fuck did I get so nervous about that? 
if I wasn't as nervous, I know I would have done better. And there was no reason to be nervous because they were lovely. Everyone was nice. And I knew my lines and it was all fine. Um, I could have enjoyed it more if I wasn't as nervous. And you just handled it anyway. And when you realize that actually, you know what? No matter what happens to you in a casting, no one's ever died of a casting, right? No matter what happens to you, you will handle it. Then actually you realize you can go into that situation needing zero control because you're going to handle it anyway. Thus, really, there is nothing to be fearful about. And I get people, and this might sound bonkers and a bit out there and a bit airy-fairy, right? But we work a lot on, uh, well, it sounds mental this, but like power phrases for people to actually, incantations for people to say again and again as they're going into a situation like this. And also power moves as well, physically standing in various postures that are scientifically proven to in, increase confidence. Um, and we get people to go into the toilet before an audition and they stand in like a star pose and they've got these incantations going on. And mine for me, I'll share, I'll share quite a few of mine. I always say, Sam, every time as I'm walking through the door, everything I need is within me now and I have the courage to see it through. Everything I need is within me now and I have the courage to see it through. And you get yourself to a point where you can get yourself in a peak state quite quickly through incantations, through you know physicality, and ultimately just believing in yourself. And that's quite difficult to get when you haven't been trained in it. And that's you know, like I say, that's what the whole bullet practice program and a lot of the coaching that I do is all about is in, is literally ingraining confidence, installing confidence into people in the same way people install nervousness into themselves. It works exactly the same way. Your brain can either work for you or it can work against you. Um, and a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> literally wire their brains to work against and they'll go into an audition saying things like, don't forget your lines, don't forget your lines, don't forget your lines. And when you're doing that, your brain is like Google, right? So it's saying, okay, then what do you want me to do? And it will try and go and find something. But there are in, there's an infinite number of alternatives to don't forget your lines, what do you want me to do then? Do you want me to do a dance? Do you want me to cook some pancakes? You know, I don't understand what you're asking me to do. Um, so inevitably what happens, all you've got in your head is forget your lines, forget your lines, forget your lines. And people freaking forget the lines. That's what you're doing that moment when they hit, they press the record on the camera and you hear a beep and you go beep and your mind goes completely blank. How many people have felt this over or in like overriding feeling of sickness, absolute panic because they can't remember the first line five seconds before they know that camera's going to go on. And then they have to go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, one sec, I'm just going to grab my first line. And you might have been looking at that first line for days before that audition. And you've cut, and you know it. You know you know it. But for some reason, this panic and you, people are looking for the scripts. And it's like, what? I just need my first line. My first, and they can't remember their first line. And that's because they're focusing on not forgetting their lines as opposed to focusing on doing a good job in the audition, you know. Of course, you're going to do a great job. Of course, you know your lines. You know, everything you need is within you now. You have the courage to see this through. It's all about positive self-talk, really. And just getting yourself into the zone and realizing that actually everyone else who's walking through that door feels exactly the same as you, not just you. So if you can get yourself, you know, instilled with confidence before you walk in, you've, you've already won, to be honest. I was at an audition for a drama and I was sat in reception and I saw a guy in the corner and he said to his mate, his mate came in and they were both from the same drama school. And he said to his mate that he was going for this part. And I knew it was the part I was going for, same name. I'm like, he's going for that. And yet I could tell instantly, honestly, this is just through experience of behavior. I knew he was going to sabotage himself because he just wasn't, he could tell this guy was not in a good place mentally and physically. He was slouched. He wasn't energetic. He wasn't motivated. Um, he just had this energy about him that just wasn't good. And the casting director came in and said, oh, James, what his name is, how are you? And he looked at her and he went, oh, God, well, I just go like, where do I start? And I just thought in my head, yes, you've just lost. You've just taught yourself out of a job. I don't mean it horribly. I hope he was all right, whatever was going on in his life. But I was just like, you've done that. Like mentally, psychologically, you've just basically lost yourself a gig. If I can walk in empowered, even if I'm not perfect, I'm not completely off script, if I'm just empowered, confident, and I walk in with energy, with an aim to leave those people in that room better than I found them, I'm going to get this gig 
based on that alone because he's lost before he's even walked through the door. And I got the gig, got the like 20 minutes like after leaving the BBC, I got a phone call from my agents go, yeah, they want you to do that. Um, and I knew it was going to be like that, not because I'm brilliant or anything was amazing, just because I knew that psychologically he'd beaten himself. And this is what a lot of actors do. Sam, you're probably a really good actor, but what happens is, is your talent goes out the window because the psychology maybe isn't there. And that's why the tagline for Bulletproof Actor is mindset is everything, because I believe it's the foundation for everything. If you don't have the right mindset, I don't care how good you are, you can't build a skyscraper on shit foundations. So you can't build a decent acting career on a shit mindset. Because sometimes as well, even when people fluke it, their talent can take them somewhere, you know, where their mindset um, and their character can't keep them. They will be found out eventually. You know, and this is why people who are thrust into the, into the you know, the, the limelight sometimes fall apart and then they have to fulfill themselves with things that are dodgy. You know, and they, they, they are the people who, you know, take substances, um, struggle and drink, etc. because their mind isn't right. So mindset is everything, Sam. Like, yeah, definitely for me, it would just be like, you know, just have a look at, turn around for a start, look at everything you've achieved so far. Try and get out of that gap. A lot of people live between where they are now and where they want to be. So it's like chasing a horizon. I use that, that that analogy a lot. You know, that part for you might be the horizon. Oh, if I just get this part, I'll be happy. If I just get this part, I'll be happy. Um, and you end up living like chasing this because when you get that part anyway, there's another part that might come up. You know, whenever you get to a horizon, you see another horizon and people live between the gap, well, in the gap between where they are now and where they want to be. Holy, holy, like miserable. Um, putting loads of pressure on themselves, nervous, and never booking another gig because they're just under so much pressure. So turn around, look at everything you've achieved so far. That in itself will prove to you that you can do it. This next audition you have, well, you know what, you've been in this situation before, you've handled it, you can do it. Everything you need is within you now. You have the courage to see it through. Go in, do a good job. Like we said before, get out next. doesn't matter. Once it's done, it's done. Um, don't fixate on it. But it is a mindset game that that's all that is. It's nothing to do with your acting ability. No acting class can help you with that in terms of going, oh, we'll just get better at acting. If you're booking parts, you're good enough already. Um, you book parts on major TV series, thus you're good enough already. But your head is going to be the thing between you and, and, and real success now. Um, so just start working on that as much as you can. Um, I'd like to find out more about getting into acting as an older person. Any advice as David? Um, yeah, embrace your age, David, man. And realize that getting old is a privilege a lot of people do not get. A friend of mine, 35 years old, died of a brain tumor two weeks ago. Um, a lot of people who are older um, feel that it's like their time is done. Um, I put a little video out not long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, talking about being on your own time, being on your own clock, and appreciating that everybody's on their own time. You know, Just because LA is seven hours behind the UK doesn't mean it's slow. Um, for you, it might just be actually your time might be now, you know, and also with age, uh, David, you've you've accumulated so much more experience that I could never bring to a performance yet because I haven't had it. Um, so the emotional experience you've got as a human being through going through shit in life, um, I don't know how old you are, but the older you are, the more shit we're thrown in life. I mean, that's just how it is, you know, and it's how you deal with that um, that enables you to grow as a person. You gain much more emotional um experience and, and emotional mastery to a certain degree emotional recall um you know if you want to kind of go into like you know various techniques within acting um but yeah i absolutely embrace that what i would do is i would go right i'm gonna don't know how far you are in your career but i would get i would get my showreel scene shot for my age um and to your type i would then seek out agents who don't have people in my age bracket um i would send them a reel um i would you know i would go to acting classes um some classes even do like senior classes as well um and then what they do is they will bring casting directors in to see older actors because there's not a lot of you know a shitload of older actors there isn't any a lot of people drop out um so there is you know a relative shortage compared to you know the 20 to 30 year old category i mean god 20 to 30 you've got a hell of a lot of competition you know, when you hit 60 plus, your competition literally falls in half. So um, I would definitely embrace that um, and be massively grateful. When I got to 36, a couple of weeks ago, David, I was like, two ways I could look at this. I could be like, oh God, I'm getting older or I can celebrate the fact that I'm getting older. I've made it another year. Um, and like I say, you know, just the brutal reality is, you know, a friend of mine didn't and that's very sobering. I just go, wow, you know what? Like no one should ever complain about getting old. When I hear people complain about getting old, 
I kind of can't tolerate it because um, it is a privilege. It's a massive privilege. So very few in this world, you know, are uh, are robbed of. You know, little kids um, won't have made it today. Um, so yeah, I know you're not thinking like that. It's what put everything in perspective. So embrace the age. Um, you know, play on that. Find your niche. Shoot showreel material for your niche. Um, I think there's a tendency for people sometimes to want to play younger to hold on to their youth when actually, you know what, that's all lovely, but you would get employed more for playing what you are. Um, I know someone who uh, would be a fantastic Werther's original granddad. Um, <laughs> likes to um, likes to play against type, though. Likes to play against that, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I think sometimes when you embrace what you are, you get employed for what you are, you get known for what you are, and when you're good at what you are, you will always be in employment. So, uh, so yeah, roll with it, man. But take action. That's the that's the major thing, David. Because like you know, life does pass you by quickly. So, all about the action. All right, Gary. Gary's here as well. Chandra's here. That's a new name, I think. Let us know where you're viewing from. Sophie's here as well. All right, Soph. Um, Sam says thanks, Ross. That makes sense. Thanks so much for answering. My pleasure. It's what we uh, what we do these for. Um, so, what time are we on now? We still got 15 minutes or so. Um, no problem, David. So yeah. So any any other questions people have on anything we've spoken about? I love talking about the mindset of stuff. Honestly, human behaviour freaking fascinates me. It has done f f as long as I can remember. I took A level psychology when I was sixteen. Changed my life. I was like, wow. Kind of like I can explain why people behave the way that they do. This is amazing because <laughs> in a way, <laughs> you can use it for good to influence people, not to manipulate people. Influence people when you understand why people behave in, in, in various ways and it helps you obviously understand yourself and what you want to be as an actor you want to be understanding of yourself because the more understanding of yourself you are as a human being I think the better you know the better you can be in a performance because you just get human emotion effectively um, what else have I got to talk about on here these videos that I want to do so I'm doing my vlog every other week, right? YouTube.com forward slash watch Ross like I said check that episode out today that I recorded with Hannah from the voiceover gallery you don't get advice from talent managers and talent scouts at voiceover agents on the internet anywhere else never ever seen it in 15 years of being a voiceover artist i've never seen people talking so honestly and openly about the voiceover industry go check out the vlog and check out the podcast on on this.tv as well but in the weeks between my vlog i want to do specific videos that'll be like three to five minute videos on a certain topic that's going to help people with something like mindset so i was wondering if you could give me some topics that maybe you'd be like, you know what, I'd like three minutes of advice on that particular topic. I've got things here like rejection, um, on you know finding a way out of the day job as an actor to maybe build an online business of your own that you can work on your own terms. Um, staying motivated is a big one. People get one slap down where they, you know, they get the t get to the second recall stage of a job, feel they've got it they get it whipped away from them but you know, they're down to the last two, the other person gets it and they're like, fuck it, I might as well just give up now. I thought this was going to be it the seventh time where I've got down to the last two and I still haven't done it. And they just struggle with motivation. They're like, you know what, actually, I can't be arsed with this anymore. And then they feel they've wasted 25 years trying and they never got anywhere and then they see someone from drama school get plucked out at 18 and get a massive role and they feel that they deserve it more than they do and stuff. Fucks people up. So... Um, motivation is a big one for me in terms of and that's internal motivation not external motivation external motivation doesn't work a lot you can go and watch a motivational video and you should do there's a time and a place for that Go just to, just google motivational video on YouTube just watch some stuff in the morning if it's going to fire you up get you going um, but I want to teach people how to stay internally motivated so the motivation is coming from within not from an external stimulus um, so I want to create a video on that but any anyone else got any other suggestions for videos that are like actually you know what that'd be quite a good one because we want to create these videos that will be very share worthy in terms of like they'll be just helpful three minutes five minutes maximum of straight up no nonsense practical actionable steps for you to get your head around an area of the industry or an area of life that's going to help you and i certainly don't have the answers to it all there's definitely areas of my life for that i'm like god <laughs> i'm still struggling with that Definitely don't profess to be perfect. Anyone, tell you what as well, anyone, I don't care who they are, any coach, any mentor, anyone who professes to have all their shit together is, is absolutely lying. Absolute bullshit. 100%. You know, and you look at their social media 
and you'll see everything lined up in a row like it's perfect. You go, oh my God, their life. Trust me, right? And I include myself in this, right? Obviously, I don't post like loads of negative stuff on Twitter. I hate it. I just don't like negativity. I hate, I don't have a tolerance for it. So I won't post anything because I don't want to dwell on it. I want to, like I say, move on to the next opportunity. Um, but we all only post edited highlights of the good stuff in our life. Please remember that. I know it's basic and people say it all the time, but I still think if we're not careful, we forget and we look at the flashy Instagram posts and the flashy Twitter posts and how every actor, God, every actor in the world seems to, you know, want to post uh, the front page of a script, just working on learning lines, just working on this. And if before you know it, you feel like the only one who's not working on a project. Um, it's not the case. I know people who have posted pictures from three months ago of a script they were working on three months ago, posting it in present day to make it look like they're still busy. They're not. They're absolutely not. I know people, honestly, as well, like <laughs> who are posting things on Instagram that would make them look absolutely together. And then I get direct messages from them 10 minutes later and their whole life is falling apart. Like really mean that in terms of like they feel they have no direction, they feel fraudulent, and yet they have to keep up this appearance online. Um, don't fall for it. It's not real. So I wouldn't mind doing a video on that actually as well. Um, I trust you 100%, Ross says Jenna. I'm, I'm pretty legit because I will let you know when stuff's not going right in my life. That's why I do a vlog. Because I'm like, actually, you know what? This shows everything. It's the whole reason I did a vlog. Because I was like, one, I want to show people to practice what I preach, um, and two, I want to show like everything. Like, and if you know stuff hasn't go gone right, you know, showed me not long ago on a vlog getting lumber with a 900 pound electricity bill that wasn't, that wasn't mine, <laughs> and uh, and try and figure that out. You know, um, so yeah, we kind of show you everything. But just remember, not everybody does, and people will try and be like that to sell you stuff. Um, so be careful and particularly in the acting industry acting classes do your research on the people running the classes I'm seeing more and more and I say this a lot but it's just because like I do see it a lot more and more people launching acting classes promising the world delivering very little and when you google and you IMDB the people go into imdb.com and actually type the person's name and if they're an actor if they're an actor of any caliber they will have credits on IMDB that aren't just you know, their own short film that they've written. They will have TV credits. Um, just have a look at these people and go, actually, you know what? You're you're promising to get me roles on TV. And I've looked at your IMDb and you've done nothing. Like, whoa, these people who charge 35 quid for a Skype call for 30 minutes on Skype for a coaching Skype call. I've seen casting directors, supposed casting directors, offering Skype calls with actors for £35 for 30 minutes. I just like to call bullshit on that. Because I'm like, if you were a casting director and you were working, you wouldn't need to charge me 35 quid to jump on a call with me. You would be too busy for that, or you would be earning enough money from your casting director work, which is highly paid when you're working at the top, very highly paid. Um, no one will mind me saying that, but it is. Um, they, they don't need the money. The reason I do all this stuff for free is because, thankfully, touch wood, thank God, I'm doing all right. I'm earning enough out of my voiceover career, my acting career, to not need to go, oh, give me £35 for an hour of coaching on on Facebook. No, it's bullshit. It's totally disingenuous. Um, and I hate it. So I don't fall for any of that nonsense. Um, yeah, little rant. Go off on one there. Right, we've got about five minutes left. Any more for any more? I hope this has been kind of useful. What are you going to do this week, right, that's actually like something that's actionable? Let's figure out for people. What can you all do this week, tomorrow or tonight if you're in the States? I don't know if Tony's here. I know uh, Richard is in the UK now. He's not, he's not He's watching from the UK tonight, not from Miami or Florida. Um, what can you do tomorrow that's actually going to take you one step closer to the outcome that you want this month, right? It's the 24th of September as we record this. We've got seven days left of September before we really hit autumn and winter is on its way. What can you do this week that's going to help you, you know, achieve that goal? What one? If you could achieve something now that would make everything else easier or unnecessary, what would that thing be? You know, so maybe it goes back to... Um, getting ready to send your showreel out early. You know, you're getting your showreel done. 
get that list that, like I say, text any, everyone on here who's missed that as well. Text casting to 88228. It's only going to cost you a standard text. It's not a con. It's not a rip off. None of that. You're going to get back a list of 33 casting directors I think you should be following on Twitter. Follow them all in preparation for sending your reel out. And then put them in an order where you're like, actually, you know what? I'm going to send it every two days. I'm going to send it to three casting directors. Now, what you want to do when you're doing that is don't just send at Andy Pryor, here's my reel. You know, at Daniel Edwards, here's my reel. In three consecutive tweets all at once. Because if anyone looks at your timeline, it's just going to look like spam, spam, spam. Like, you just, you know, you're just plowing everybody. So send a tweet. And then reply to someone else's tweet. Send another tweet, reply to someone else's tweet, um, and then send the casting director something. Then reply to someone else's tweet. It's not a casting director, you know, reply to something. Have it so like, you know, every third or fourth thing on your timeline is you tweeting the casting director your reel. Um, and then just, you know, do three every two days or something like that. So maybe you want to kind of get a hierarchy of going, right, I'm going to hit these people first because they cast the soaps. Then I'm going to hit these people because they're in my area. They cast shows up north if you're up north or they cast shows down south if you're down south, etc. cetera. Um, what's the best way to contact them? Email or Twitter, says Lee. Um, on that list that you've got there, mate, you'll see underneath the Twitter button a link to the CDG. It's called the Casting Directors Guild and you'll see their Casting Directors Guild page. Uh, on the CDG, it's a way to find Casting Directors' email addresses out for free without paying for them. Please don't pay anybody bullshit like, you know, 20 quid for Casting Directors' email addresses. You don't need it. It's free. For Casting Directors, it's worth their salt. The, you know, it's not going to cost you anything. Um, I would, uh, ideally, email is better because, I mean, tweet, it depends. Have a, you're going to have to look at the, at the person's Twitter and see if they're interacting with actors on that level. Certain ones will. Peter Hunt, for instance, at Hollyoaks, absolutely will be happy to receive your your showreel via a tweet because he's just a bloody lovely guy, um, great man, very actor friendly, um, and he posts like a, a Thursday industry thought every Thursday, so he's very active on Twitter. He'll be happy to receive your your reel via via tweet, and and he will watch it as well. And um, some people don't. Some people even state in their bio, "Don't tweet me your reel." Doesn't mean you can't interact with them on a, on a normal level and have conversations with them because that's what Twitter's about. It's an open party; everyone's invited. Just means they're not going to have time, you know, time to watch your reel. In that case, you want to email it them. Um, that's just going to take you a bit of research, actually. But it's good. I'm not going to tell you that because it's good for you to do that because then you're going to learn about these casting directors like intrinsically, like properly. So you'll be able to, you know, hold that information for yourself. Um, I'm not going to tell you which ones because I want you to research it because then you're going to remember it. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and, or you could just go down the route of going, you know what, I'm going to email them all. That's maybe the safest route. Just just email everybody. Um, and you can do all your emails at once then because obviously they're not public and you're not just sending 12 tweets out one after the other that's exactly the same. Um, so I would uh, I would do that. But Twitter's good if, you just, you know, if you're struggling to get through to somebody. Um, I do this quite a lot where I email... And then I send a tweet that just says, hey, by the way, no rush. Just want to let you know I've dropped you an email. Have an amazing day. Just something very nice. Um, it doesn't even require a response. You know, someone might just like it or something. So at least, you know, they've seen it. Um, that's quite good. So you hit them twice then. Um, don't forget LinkedIn as well, people. If you're struggling to find people or you want to send your stuff directly to writers or you've got something to say to a writer or a producer or something like that, LinkedIn is massively underdeployed. Um, I wanted to state my life on Mr. Grant's uh probity is that a, oh i know you're so intelligent i don't even know what that word means and i've met more than my fair share of bullshitters and i said <laughs> i hate him probity what's that is that or is that a spelling mistake or is that just because i'm so do you know i'm educated as well and a but that's just that's the i'm gonna i'm gonna google it in case it's a word anyone know what probity means it is a word and a you're so you're just so intellectual Quality of having strong moral principles. Thank you, Renee. But unfortunately, I don't have a quality of, of knowing uh, a lot of words. Um, but yeah, that's lovely. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, honestly, I am legit. Like, swear to God. Um, just because I hate bullshit as in this industry. I've just seen so many of them. been around a long time. Um, Claire's here. Brilliant tonight. Thanks, Ross, for all the invaluable info. Thanks, Claire. Appreciate you being here. Um, thank you very much indeed. Um, that's a new new name, I think. Um, thanks to everybody who's new, who's watched. Do this every Monday night, 9pm. Next week, we're going to be looking at 
a, a book for the last time. We're going to look at Jen Sincero's book called You're a Badass at Making Money. Um, it's something that I think a lot of actors, unfortunately, aren't badasses at. And particularly British people in general, because we look at money as a dirty thing when actually it's not at all. It really isn't. It just absolutely isn't. It's It can bring massively positive impact to the world. The more money you have, the more money you're earning, the higher quality you know life and career you can lead, but also the more you can give back, the more impact you can make. Um, just overall, like... The, the bigger the dent you can make in the universe, I guess. Um, so we're we'll looking at Jen's book for the last time next Monday night. We've looked at it for the last three weeks. If you go to youtube.com forward slash act on this TV, you can look at all of the replays of those book clubs. Um, we don't, I don't put them on, on this dot TV, the website anymore. That's just going to have the podcasts, the live broadcast with the casting directors and the video interviews on there as well. Uh, keeping that super, super simple and clean now. All of the replays of these broadcasts and these Facebook Lives and, and everything like that goes on YouTube, on the Ats on this YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com forward slash Ats on this TV. So if you want to go and watch the previous book club replays, go and check them out. Very, very good book. Jen Sincero, it's spelled S-I-N-C-E-R-O. Great personal development lady um, who just says it as it is. She's not a bullshitter, Renee. Eh? She's proper to the point. Um, very trustworthy. Got a lot of time for uh, Jen. So we we'll about Monday night for that. If I can do anything for anyone in the meantime, um, then just drop me a uh, an email, ross at actsonthis.tv. Really mean that. Um, it takes me a while to get back to people sometimes, but if there is something that I can help you with, um, not just saying that for effect, please do email me. Um, if I can help, I will uh, I will absolutely help you. Going a little bit um, manic at the moment, moving into this new apartment that I'm moving into. But when I get time, I will sit down and I will go through all of the emails that I've had off people. Um, or you can tweet me as well. If you want like a quicker response, I'm on Twitter a lot. Just at Ross A. Grant is my personal one. Um, or at Act On This TV is the... Um, is the Act On This Is one. Act on, is the Act On This Is one? Is the website's one. Um, so drop me, a, uh, drop me a tweet. Just try to get this broadcast up on Facebook so I can actually end it. Um, on time. Look at that, we're right to the minute as well. 21.59. <sighs> we're just doing brilliantly, aren't we? Um, I can't see your comments anymore on Facebook. Apologies, guys. Um, but if there's anything else you need to follow up on as well, um, I should say as well, the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash act on this TV. Um, do come and join there. There's nearly 10,000, I think, other actors in there. And that's where I post all of the updates, everything that's going on in the Acts on this community. Um, goes in the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash ats on this TV. Um, and do check out, I'll play one more time. I'll just, I'll finish on this. For those who missed it the first time, I'm going to play the 60 second clip of my vlog this week with um, head of talent management at the voiceover gallery. If you want to get into voiceover, it changed my life. I mean, I can't tell you how much it changed my life. I don't know what I'd be doing without it, to be honest. Uh, I'd probably still be working for minimum wage. <laughs> it, was the, it was the thing that got me out of my day job uh, a long, long time ago, um, over a decade ago. Uh, if you want to get into voiceover, I hope it can have a positive impact on you as well. Please go and watch this vlog. It's youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. And if you want to listen to the full podcast with Hannah, get a freaking premium membership at adsonthis.tv. Um, I'm not just saying that. It's like so valuable. The information on there, like game changing. Here's a six second clip. Um, until next time, I will uh, see you soon. Bye for now. I'd be hiding in the uh, in the stock room, my minimum wage job that I hated. And you'd be like, Ross, I've got your job. And I'd be like, oh my God, like this is now the equivalent of like almost a month's wages or something stupid like that. Definitely. <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 43 of Watch Ross, the one where it's all about the climb. Right now though, I'm gonna learn about voiceover. Are you coming in to listen or what? I'm coming in to not just listen. He's going not to listen. Over. He's going in to take over. As uh, the agents are essentially selling voiceovers, that, that's what they do. They present these voiceovers to clients who ultimately would pick them yep. uh, and then put them in for jobs. So I need to make sure there's the best talent available for our agents to put forwards. So every day I, I talent scout. You'd be amazed how bad people go about approaching agents. <laughs> 